Hi there. I'm Laura Rainwater. I'm one of the pastors at Parker United Methodist Church. And I just wanted to share a few things about what Pastor Cody talked about this past Sunday, which is that we are people of hope. There are times when it is easy to feel filled with hope, to feel hopeful. Sometimes it's really more difficult and we feel hopeless or just less than hopeful. One of the things that's giving me hope right now is my daughter, the joy and our 15-year-old daughter who's doing amazing things. But one of the more fun things right now is that she is finding joy in re-watching um, The Sound of Music. Does anybody remember The Sound of Music? It came out just a few years ago. It has wonderful music. It has a fun plot. But one of the things that jumped out as we were watching it again, or I was listening to it as it was playing on the television, is um, toward the end, Maria says, we can't run away from our problems. We just have to address them. And I thought, what a good message for me to hear. And what a good message for my... 15-year-old to hear, for all of our kids to hear. Because there are times that we just want to run away from our problems, but we have to address them. We have to face them front on. One of the other things, one, other actually another movie that makes me think about that this is the movie Inside Out. Inside Out is a Pixar movie. Yes, we had our Pixar movie series in um, August, I believe. Um, but Inside Out was one that really touched us. It came out in 2015 when we were moving from Laramie to Cheyenne. And so our daughter, who was eight years old at the time, um, this was the first move she was going to experience. You see, in the movie, Inside Out, 11-year-old Riley moves from Minnesota to San Francisco. And that's a difficult time to move at that age. It's always a challenge, but she's leaving all of her friends. She's leaving her hockey club behind and moving to this, this unknown city. And the story helps us to see what struggles Riley experienced as she moved. We took our daughter to see this because we knew that perhaps this would give voice to some of the feelings she expected during the move. But just a little personal clarity, or just to be honest, um, it really spoke to me because when I was in eighth grade, we moved from Montgomery, Alabama to Tallahassee, Florida. And um, if any of you remember, or at least I could just say, this is what my experience was. When I was in Montgomery, I was in a junior high that was sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. No, it was seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. And I was moving to Tallahassee that was middle school that was sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So I was moving from a school when I was kind of middle of the pack, kind of like a sophomore, if you will, in the junior high, to a school where the eighth graders had been there. This was their third year, and they all knew each other. And I knew as an outsider that it would be really hard to make friends. And it was a tough year. It was a tough year. My parents, though, stood by us. One of the things I remember, and I don't remember if it was during the fall or the winter or the spring, but during that time, our family would do things together just because we knew it was tough. We didn't have our, our friends. We didn't have our support network. I remember seeing um, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, our parents took us to that as something fun during a difficult time. So we watched the movie Inside Out, thinking that that might give voice to some of the challenges that we experience when transitions happen, when change happens. Riley moves, but as a devoted daughter, just like ours, she didn't want to burden her parents. So when her parents asked her how school was going, she would say that word that we often use, fine, or wouldn't say anything at all. Maybe she might slam the door like we often do at that age. It was hard, though, and she didn't want to burden her parents, and so she just kind of ignored those negative feelings. The beauty about the movie Inside Out is that they personify these emotions that are all inside of Riley, and it's supposed to make us think that they're all inside of us, 
The five emotions are joy, sadness, anger, disgust, and one more. Let me look it up. Despair. Let's see. Joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and anger. We feel those at different times, but when life gets really difficult, when we start to feel hopeless, what is happening? Is it the joy that we feel? Not often. Maybe it's sadness or disgust. Actually, what I remember from that movie, she felt disgust because the only kind of pizza they had in their neighborhood in San Francisco had broccoli on it. Can you imagine that? I mean, we thought people yelled at each other over pineapple on pizza. In that movie, joy was the, the main emotion that was trying to direct Riley. So she kept trying to, it's, like, it's that fake it till you make it. Everything will be okay. Just be joyful. And that's not what Riley was feeling at all. And through one adventure after another through this, this movie, um, it wasn't until at the end when Joy allowed sadness to kind of take the reins, when Joy allowed sadness to be the main emotion that Riley was feeling, then Riley was able to experience everything. She was able to communicate with her parents and she was able to cry but also to tell her parents, this is really hard. And it wasn't until then that she could really make those new memories and really say, that was then and now is now and I'm going to move forward. You see, squashing down the sadness or squashing down the other emotions just didn't necessarily mean that joy was going to happen. That's how it was for me in eighth, when I moved in eighth grade. It was also one of the things we prepared our daughter for when we moved from Cheyenne to Denver her eighth grade year. I told her, or we told her, um, it was going to be tough. It's going to be rough. You're going to go to a middle school where everybody knows everybody and you're going to feel like an outsider, but just hang in there. And we promise when you get to high school at a different school, you'll be just like everybody else. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. But we allowed her or we gave her permission or we prepared her for those moments when it wouldn't be easy. And we wanted her to be able to say, this isn't easy, mom and dad. This is rough. And by facing it together, by facing our problems together, we could get through it. It feels right now that our church is going through a time of transition that we've had a lot of conversations happening at our church about our future, about where, what we should be doing or who we should be affiliating with. And, and if you're watching this and you're not part of our church, uh, maybe you just end it right now. I don't know. Um, if you're watching this right now and you are part of a church, but you've not been hearing those conversations, um, just know that they are there. The leadership board has invited people to share their thoughts about the future of our church. And the leadership board members have been listening and we appreciate everybody sharing. Um, this coming Saturday, we're going to have a leadership retreat and we're not going to talk about all of these up in the air questions. Instead, we're going to focus on what is it that we want to do to to um, determine our mission, our vision, and our values. What are the values that we want to live out as a church? And, and how does that inform our mission and vision? They might be related. It's not that we're trying to squash the conversation, but we're trying to do something a little bit different. But right now, it just feels unsettled. Some of you have shared that it's you feel the anxiety and... <sighs> What I'm here to say is that we have to face what's going on. We have to address the questions people have. But most importantly, we have to acknowledge that there are some challenges. We have to acknowledge that there are some uneasy, some difficult conversations that we are having right now and some difficult conversations that we're going to be having in the future. What gives me hope in all of this, is that we are a people of faith. We are a people of Christ. Our, as our um, sermon series has been recently, we are people of stories, we are people of communion, we are people of baptism, and we are people of hope. Admit what's going on. And 
know that we are not going through this alone. Instead, we are just trying to be the most faithful community of, of Jesus followers that we can be because we know the truth about Jesus. We know the truth about being a disciple. We know the truth about this amazing God who loves us, this amazing God who is who forgives us more than we can even count, this amazing God who wants to be active in our world through our actions, through our hearts, through our words through the compassionate work that we do. That's where I find hope. But I also find hope in knowing that we can address this together. And I wanna make a promise that I will be truthful with what we have to talk about. I will be truthful about um, the conversations, about what I know, about what I'm hearing, and I know the leadership board is saying the same thing. It's not just movies I like, but um, also a television show. My favorite television show right now is Ted Lasso. And there's a quote in um, season two from Dr. Sharon, who's the, the psychologist for the team. She tells Ted, and I'm going to clean up the language, um, the truth will set you free, but sometimes it'll make you really angry. Sometimes addressing what's going on, facing our challenges can be maddening, can be make us angry, make us sad, give us despair, um, maybe even make us sad. And sometimes addressing what happen, is happening around us can give us joy as well. And so I just promise as one of your pastors to speak the truth, but as Paul says in Galatians, to speak the truth in love and to speak the truth in such a way that we are building each other up, that we are coming together as people of faith. We are coming together as people of hope. If this has been a difficult conversation or you'd like to talk more about it, please contact me. Reach out to me. You can send me an email. You can, um, you can text me, whatever it might be. Or maybe there is something going on in your life that's not related to this at all in the church or what's happening at the church at all. Um, know that I am praying for all of you. I am praying for all of us. And if there's any way that, that I can provide care or even listen so that we can get to hope, please let me know. We are a people of hope because we know the end of the story. We know that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We know that there is new life that is offered to us. And we know that no matter what, we are not alone. So thank you, friends, for listening and um, go in peace.